Hi. In this video, I'm going to show you how to mount, set up, and align a cartridge on this turntable. This turntable is from a company called Audio Technica, but it could be from other companies. The main thing about the turntable is that the tone arm is a type where you have a detachable head shell. Detachable means that this front part where you're going to mount the cartridge can be taken off and after mounting the cartridge, you can then put it back on. Many other tone arms has a integrated head shell, so it's not able to take it off. We have a different video showing how to set up a cartridge on that kind of turntable with integrated head shell. So if your turntable has tone arm with integrated head shell, please watch that video instead. This is going to be about detachable head shell. We are going to use an Autophone 2M Red cartridge to set up on this turntable. And again, this is representing a lot of other cartridges out there that you could also set up using exactly the same principle on this kind of turntable. The 2M Red cartridge is an affordable cartridge, entry level, all round cartridge, plays a lot of music really, really well. So let's see how we can get that one installed. First of all, I have to cut open the box to see what's inside. The factory ceiling. And take the inner box out. And then we can see, if you look from the front side, you have the cartridge. And on the back side, you have some accessories which we will come back to. First, we will try to have a look at the cartridge. I'll take off the lid and get out the cartridge. We need to be careful about cartridges, small delicate things. But if we have a look at this right away, you can see there's some kind of protection on it here. This is what we call a stylus guard because the most delicate thing on a cartridge is the stylus. So let's have a look at where the stylus is. I'll take off the stylus guard. So it's very easy to do this kind of motion. And then if you look now, you might be able to see a very small shiny thing. This is the cantilever, it's an aluminum tube. And at the very end of that, there's a small diamond. And this is the delicate thing on a cartridge. And this is also the thing, the stylus, that is going to go into the groove when we are going to play music later on. So be careful about that. So as long as we do not need to expose that, it's wise to put the stylus guard back on. So I'll do that right now, like this. Okay, let's have a close look at the cartridge, what you can see on it on the outside. We can look at the back end. At the back end, you have four gold-plated pins this is where the electrical signal from the cartridge will come out when it's playing music. We have to connect those four pins to, one second, I'll take off the head shell, to those four colored wires here. So we'll do that in a moment. If we look at the top, you would see two threaded holes. And these holes are for mounting the cartridge on the tone arm or on the head shell, so it will be placed like this, and then the two screws will go through here. So this we will also do in a second. An interesting thing about this 2M Red cartridge is that the stylus part, the front part, is detachable. So if something happens to this part, you can buy a new one, you don't need to buy a whole new cartridge. And also very interesting, is that if you go, if you have been using this 2M Red for a while and you want to upgrade to a better sound quality, there's a possibility to buy a different kind of stylus. Autophone has a video showing how to make this kind of upgrade by changing the stylus. We'll put this back on now because this is about the 2M Red. So, next step is to have this one mounted on the head shell. For that, we will need some tools. And let's see what's on the back side of this box. So I have to open it. Those boxes are always nice to open. So I got something out. 
Let's see what's inside. Mm, we have a user guide. User guide, always important. We will look inside that in a moment when we need some information. We put it on the table for now. And there's a small bag with some tools, some screws. Let's have a look. I'll just take out first small brush, stylus brush, to keep the stylus clean. So every time you want to play a record, we recommend that you clean your stylus with this stylus brush. Also included, this is for the mounting process, a small screwdriver. So this is going to be used on these screws, which are also supplied. I'll take them out in my hand. There are four screws, two long ones, two short ones. The long ones you're going to use if your head shell is thick. If the head shell is not that thick, you can use a short one. We recommend that you always start out using the short one, not to get the screw too far into the cartridge. So for this one, I'll also use the short ones. I'll put them on, down on the table. Um, when we go to the process where you have to mount the wires at this terminal pins at the end, you can use your fingers. It's not so easy for me, but you can use your fingers to mount that. I prefer to use a pair of tweezers, not a very small pair of tweezers, but very substantial because, because you have to grab those wires. But you can also use something like this, needle nose pliers. This is a curved version, you can also have straight version. This is also very suitable. And even if we had a nice little screwdriver supplied, I prefer to use my own screwdriver. I've been using that for a long time, so this is what I'm going to use today. But you can use the one supplied, of course. You can choose now if you want to mount the wires first or if you want to mount the cartridge first. On this setup, I would prefer to mount the cartridge first. So if you look at the head shell, you can see you have two long holes. So somewhere down there you need to find the two threaded holes. Then you take the short screws and you can in fact see if you look it's sticking out so it's, it's long enough. So this goes into one of the threads on the cartridge and you can hold it like this. Then you take your screwdriver and you tighten it slightly, only slightly, like this. You take the other, also the short screw, put it in on the other side and you tighten that as well. Then Let's have a look at the back end. We now have to connect the wires and they are color coded, which is quite nice. So if you look at the wires, you would have white, blue, red and green. If you look at the cartridge, you will have white, blue, red, but no green. But the green is just covered by a ground connection. So this one without any color, that's the green one. So let's start out. I'll in fact take the green one to start with, to mount. So you need to, to find the wire, grab it, and then don't, don't grab it on the wire, grab it at, at the, the, the solid part at the end because the wire is really thin and quite fragile. So this is sort of a little bit tricky sometimes, but you have to put it on and then firmly press it down so it sits nicely. And then I would take the white one, put it on, press it down like this. I'll take the blue one, again, not the wire, but the golden part. So you can see I have totally control of what I'm doing, cartridge with head shell in one hand and the wires with the tweezer in the other hand. So I can press against each other. I'm not doing it right on the toenail. So that's so far so good. But now the big question is where to mount this? Because you can see you have these sliding holes. Is it supposed to be mounted there? there or there. In many cases a good choice would be to just say okay we'll put it in the middle position because this is sort of a good starting point and then later on in the alignment process we can figure out where to put it more precisely. 
But many manufacturers of tone arms and turntables in their user guide for their product, they are telling you what kind of distance there should be between the back end of the, of the head shell, which is here, and the stylus. And that distance in many cases is 52 millimeters. So if you adjust the distance from here to the stylus to 52 millimeters, then you have in fact the correct alignment already. So this is what we are going to do. And uh, you can use different tools for this measurement. Caliber would be maybe the best one, but probably you will not have one available. If you do, you can use it. Um, I'll just slightly mount it. And then I'll be cheating a little bit because the tool you're going to use to, to measure this distance is your own choice. So we can imagine that this is 52 millimeters now. And then I'll just do like this and take this one over because this has been adjusted to 52 millimeters. So again, from here to here, it's 52 millimeters. Later on, we will check out if this is correct. But by no for now, this is the correct alignment. Next step, to mount it on the turntable. Make sure that it's sort of mounted vertically or if you look at the head shell top, that that is lateral. Now we have the cartridge mounted on the head shell and the head shell on the tone arm. The next thing we are going to do is to adjust the tracking force. The tracking force is the force that the stylus is putting down on the record surface during playback. Now we need the user guide and we have a look. This is where we have the data for the 2M, uh, 2M cartridges and one of them, the 2M red, is here. And down here there's something called tracking force recommended and it says 1.8 grams. So this is what we're going to adjust this for 1.8 grams. So I'll release the security lock for the tone arm. And what we're going to do now is to balance the tone arm. We'll find zero tracking force where it's floating, almost touching, but not touching. And this we're going to do by using the counterweight. The counterweight has two parts, a back part, which is how you move the counterweight back and forth on the toner. And then there's a dial in front that you can turn independently. We are now using the back one. So if I put it over here and I put this really to the back, you can see it's pointing upwards. So it's definitely not balancing. If I do it the other way, then it's really pressing down. And be careful, you have the naked needle now, no protection on it so we can damage it. So this is of course the two outer positions. So somewhere in between, there will be a balancing position and this is what I'm going to look for. So I'm turning the counterweight a little bit back and forth one more time. Oh, that was too much. So I'm turning it back and forth. Now it's almost there. Turning it a little bit more. Oh, that was a little bit too much. You can see it's really close to balancing now. There. This is really nicely balancing. So this is zero tracking force. Now I grab the big counterweight with my right hand and the left hand I will turn the dial to zero like that. And now I take the back part and then I turn this until I reach 1.8 because if I turn this I'm also turning the dial. So now it reads 1.8 grams. So this is now the tracking force. We can make a check on that by using a small device like this. This is a small weight that you can use to check out the tracking force of a cartridge. There are some numbers on it. 1.25, 1.5 grams, 2 grams, 2.5 grams. And then there's a groove in the middle. And you're supposed to put this one down on the platter and then you will lower 
the cartridge down on this one so that the stylus is in the groove where you have 1.8 grams. And what you are looking for is to have these two parts, plastic parts, this one and the white one, to be perfectly aligned. So I'll put this one down on the platter, lift this one up, and then I'll find 1.8 approximately. Where are we? So this is. Oh, this is this is in fact where it's supposed to be. They are perfectly aligned now. If they were not aligned, if this was too low or too high, I'll just make a small adjustment over here. But this is now really perfectly aligned. So 1.8 grams we have, perfect. Tracking force as it's supposed to be. Alignment, we also suppose that it's okay, but we can have a check on that. We have an alignment tool like this to check for this. And what is this alignment in fact all about? It's about to make sure that the cartridge has a sort of a correct angle to the groove while it's moving across the record surface. Uh, it will never be perfect because it makes a curvature, but we make, we'll make sure that in two points it's perfect. And this is what we call zero tracking error points. And these points are marked here by an arrow and an arrow here. So what we need to do now is to put this one onto the platter and then we would lower the cartridge down to hit this point and after that hit this point and then check out if the cantilever on the cartridge is going to be parallel to this line or this line. So we'll put it down like this, lift this one up and I'll put it down at this point, so right at the end of the arrow. And then I'll have a look from here to see if I have this to be parallel. And yes, I do have. Also what I expected because I had been following the advice from the manufacturer of the tone arm that this is where the cartridge should be mounted. But now we have made a check. We can also check the other point. I'll go in there and then I will lower it down again to hit the point. One second. There, we have it. I'll have a look again. And one more time. Yes, it looks very nice. So alignment also okay. We're now getting close to be able to play some music. Next thing we want to do is to adjust anti-skating. There's a knob here, it says anti-skating. And this is a spring-loaded device inside the tone arm that will put a force on the tone arm towards the outside. Because if you play a record needle in the groove, there will be a force on the cartridge, on the needle, going towards the center of the record. And you do really not want to have this kind of force towards the center. You want to balance that force and therefore you have an anti-skating force. In this style, you will then put to the same value as your tracking force. And this will be 1.8 and that is there. So therefore anti-skating is now adjusted. So when the cartridge is going to play and you look at the needle in the groove, it will have the same force on the outside groove and on the inside groove. So, in this video so far, we have been mounting the 2M RED on an SH4 head shell. We've been mounting the head shell on the tone arm. We've been adjusting the tracking force, setting it to 1.8 grams. We've been checking the alignment of the cartridge on the tone arm. And at the end, we've also been adjusting, setting the anti-skating to 1.8, the same value as the tracking force. So now the turntable is, is in fact ready to be used to play some records. So we are ready, so let's play a record. Second. This one, special record to me. I like it a lot. I use it a lot also when I'm testing cartridges. 
I, not only for testing, but just for listening. It's perfect music. Um, let's put it on and start spinning. This record, even if it looks pretty clean, need a cleaning. Th this is something you need to do every time you want to play a record. So you need to take a record brush and then clean your record. So you keep it on the record for a revolution or two and then pull it off. You look any dust left, if then, well, you do it one more time. Pull it off and if it looks nice, okay, you have a clean record. The same thing with the stylus. Well, now this has just been installed, so basically we can assume that it's clean, but we want to clean it. Um, this is the stylus brush that was supplied together with the 2M Red, and this is perfectly okay to clean this stylus. When you do that, remember that there's only one direction where you allowed to clean the stylus and that is from the back to the front. So from back to front, so something like this. If you go in the other directions, across or from front to back, then you can destroy the cantilever and we don't want to do that. This is a good stylus brush supplied, but you can do better than that by using a fiber stylus brush like this. This is something also supplied by Autophone. The density of the fibers are much higher than on the other brush, so it's easier for this brush to take off the dust from the stylus. Again, procedure is the same from back to front. So we can do like this a couple of times, two or three times. Then we are sure that the stylus is ready to be used. Please do this every time. Clean the record, clean the stylus. That would give you a longer lifetime of the record, a longer lifetime of the stylus, and it will also improve the sound quality because it's a more clean way for the stylus in the groove. Now we will cue the stylus down, and of course we would expect to hear music, but, well, this is just a turntable standing on the table. We don't have any cables attached at the back, so we are not going to really listen to music. We can just see that we can get the, style, the cartridge down on the record surface. If we were going to listen, we would have cables from the turntable to an amplifier, able to amplify the signal from this moving magnet cartridge. And we would also need loudspeakers. We don't have that here. But anyway, I will cue that let the stylus, let the cartridge down on the record, and then we can imagine how this is going to sound. So now we are in fact playing music. I hope this video was helpful. Thank you for watching.